What's up guys, this is Will Witt with PragerU. Today we're at the Navajo Nation and we're talking to people today about political correctness, issues facing their community and their culture. Let's do it. Do you find the name Washington Redskins, is that offensive to you? Um, I don't think so. I, in my personal opinion, no. Um, I am a Washington Redskins fan. You know, I don't think it's terrible, you know, because the Redskins actually came down last year to with our Native American people and taught them how to do football, the little kids, you know. I don't find it offensive. Someone came to me and called me a red skin to my face. Hey, it's my fault for letting that hurt me. Um, I believe as Navajos and as Native Americans, we have larger issues to deal with than name calling. Yeah. Like the, I like the Cleveland Indians. I thought that was pretty cool. But some people would say that was like a drunken native on a, on a logo. You know what I mean? But the Redskins, I don't, I mean, that's a historic, that's a fighter. You know what I mean? And like you look at the Apache helicopters, you look at the Navajo code talkers, you see people jumping on an airplane saying Geronimo. So that's just admiration that the, the, the American cultures that's adapting and bringing into their, their environment. We can't dwell on the past. Progress is in the future, and so we have to look forward as Native people. I didn't know if you heard about Elizabeth Warren talking about one 1,024th Native American, mm -hmm. putting that out there. What does that mean to you when she says that? I think that's just a, a way of kind of having an advantage, yeah. being in, in a political position. Yeah. Let me ask a question back. Okay. Um, if I were, you know, maybe in a different country, let's say Ireland, and maybe I had 1% and I was trying to claim the 1%, you know what I mean? Kind of like that, you know what I mean? What would you say are the biggest issues right now facing the Navajo community? Um, definitely language and culture preservation. And realizing that it is something we need to preserve and it's something very special and unique. Something that a lot of uh, people don't get to enjoy. It's, it's a cool thing being Navajo and being Native American in this day and age. Yeah. If someone were to dress up as a Native American for Halloween, what do you think about that? Someone outside of the community? There's a fine line there. Uh, for me, there are uh, totems, there are pieces of attire and regalia that are authentic and only meant to be worn during certain times or certain acts of, of ceremony. Um, but you know, if you go to Walgreens or Walmart or the Halloween store or you know, a costume specialty store, you buy something that's obviously fake, I don't really have a problem with that. You know, the symbolism of the headdress and stuff like that. And I can see how Native Americans traditionally who may not see that as great, but as a young person like myself, I, I think that's, that's, that's a cool thing that we get to be represented. Yeah. Well, when you start mutilating eagles or, or um, sacred animals to make up your regalia just for a Halloween costume, then you're crossing the line. Disrespecting the culture. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, but as far as cultural appropriation, um, mankind wouldn't be where we are today if it wasn't for cultural appropriation at some point in our history, somebody took the idea of making fire from another culture. And the Navajos were able to adapt and basically learn from the people that they were and able to integrate that into their own culture. So we were basically survivors. Uh, I really, we take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. And then the Navajo code talkers that were in the South Pacific Theater, they used their Native American language and uh, they were instrumental in every uh, marine action and all the different scattered network islands overseas. And uh, I mean, it could have been any other, um, you know, people in the world, but I'm, uh, by the blessing of the creator, we were, we were, you know, given and granted that, that opportunity to protect our homeland, which is America, you know. But I think it has become very unfortunate that we live in a culture and a society where outrage has become a recreational pastime where people knit and pick until they find something wrong and then they become outraged by it. And that, for me, I believe that hurts cross-cultural relationships. I believe it hinders us helping to understand each other. Um, now here at the museum, I give a lot of cultural lectures and a lot of cultural tours. That's part of my job here. And I always start off every tour and every questionnaire uh, session with, I'm very difficult to offend. And I believe that the most offensive questions are the questions that need to be asked and answered. Because that's the only way we learn with each other. Whether it's between religion, beliefs, cultures, gender, 
it doesn't matter. The most offensive things are sometimes the most important conversations to have. All right, guys, so we just finished up here at the Keshmish Festival here at the Navajo Nation, and we found that most Native Americans are not so worried about being offended, more worried about bettering themselves, and they love this country, they love the military, and they love the USA. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, follow me and PragerU on social media. Drop your comments below, and make sure you share this video with your friends. I'm Will Witt for PragerU. Thank you.